This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, Joe here from Rufio. We've got Kian Blakey back again. He doesn't seem to stop wanting to get in on this channel with these deck profiles. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, you had a good run this weekend, I believe. Tell us a little bit more about how you did and uh, how it was for you. Is Felt like any other like uh, extravaganza. Did pretty well uh, on the Saturday. Um, yeah, went X one again. Uh, ended on table one, I and mean, then one on table one, which still feels a bit surreal on the last round of Swiss. I mm -hmm. uh, made top eight, and sadly uh, got paired against Quincy. And then uh, I felt that the game was definitely winnable on my part. It's just one or two little misplays here or there just lost me my invite to the. The invitational mm -hmm. uh, but overall deck worked perfectly it was just me being a bit dumb sometimes you know it's one of those things um if the fact that you've identified misplays is is good um because you can at least correct that you can fix it oh yeah it, most cases i see it in about two three minutes after the misplay which is a bit annoying to see then because mm -hmm. it, it tilts you a tiny bit during a game yeah but as long as you don't let it get the most of you or the better of you uh, just move on and then just remember, okay, don't do that again. Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest sad for this out of, out of all this for me is that obviously you said you, you were thinking about playing BA for your next event if uh, if you'd managed to get into the top four for this one. So uh, it looks like you're going to have to go again, but I'm sure you'll still find some time to, to sneak a BA in here or there anyway. Uh, I've got my invite to the next uh, Invitational. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the same event this time, but for Season 3. Yeah. So we'll try again, and if we get there, BA is... I'm dusting it off. It, Dante is <laughs> being reborn. Absolutely. Why the hell not? Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to I'm gonna churn through the list real quick because I know that you get some players who uh, are just going to turn up on the channel and just want to see the deck list and get the fuck out of here. That's absolutely fine. We'll let them get their bit, and then we'll actually go into a bit of detail about uh, your matchup. So I've got some questions about the list and, and things I want to ask you. So um, I'll just run through the list real quick. There's not much to add on here. So uh, we've got triple copies of Tribal Grade Fractal, triple copies of Nerval, uh, triple copies of Kit, double copies of Kera, uh, we've got two Ram Ram, one Rap here, Triple Ash, uh, Triple Gamma, one Driver, obviously, uh, Triple Tanky, Triple Desires, Triple Triple Tactics, Talent, I hate saying that, uh, one Call by the Grave, one Barrage, uh, two Revolt, Triple Impermanence, Triple Strike, and one Imperial Order. Uh, have I got that list right there? Just check out if I haven't got anything wrong. Uh, nothing stands out to me. Okay. Uh, Cool. Uh, so we've got, in terms of the extra deck, uh, I think the majority of this is pretty standard. There is one thing in here I do have to ask you about, which is a bit weird, but there you go. Uh, one, Fer is it Ferrigit? I don't actually know how to pronounce this. Ferrigit. Yeah, Ferrigit. Uh, we've got a single Bear Brum. Uh, we've got Rugal. Uh, we've got double Shreg. Shreg, I think that's pronounced. Uh, we've got one Almirage, um, the Ancient Warrior guy. Uh, we've got some weird eagle thing that I'm definitely not going to try and pronounce. Uh, Just we've got... Big Bird. Just Big Bird. <laughs> big Bird. That's what I've got now. <laughs> We've got one Apollo, one Axis Code Talker, uh, we've got Tiger Mortar, Chak and Nine, uh, Borbo, Dryden, and then uh, the big boy Zeus himself. And then for the side deck, I'm going to go backwards here, we've got Red Reboot, Triple Solemn Judgment, we've got Harpy's Feather Duster, Triple Twin Twisters, uh, Triple Droll and Lockbird, a single Pancratops, and Triple Artifact Lancia. Now, um, a lot of this for me um, is cookie cutter. However, there are a few bits in here that I've noticed that are a little bit off what people would use. And there's also some bits that aren't in here that I would expect to see. So I'll get to those questions in a minute, uh, but we'll go through all of that just a bit later on. So let's talk about your matchups first. How did they go? Um, so I'm pretty sure I played a different deck every single round. Sure. Um, so round one was at Nixta, oh, at the new Salad 2.0 deck. Yep. Um, game one, I do my full board. I flip order. He has no way to out it. Mm -hmm. uh, game two, I draw him. I open with double draw. Draw him on turn one. I don't have many plays. 
Uh, so then I pass up one interruption. I start to play again. I draw him again. He just passes again. And then mm -hmm. I just win from there. Yep. Round two, I was paired against Vladis uh, playing Dragon Link. Mm -hmm. uh, game one, I just misplayed out my ass. Uh, it was my game and I just threw it away. And then game two, I opened unplayable for about four or five turns until I would actually draw a proper starter card. Mm -hmm. um, so that was my own loss in Swiss. Yep. Round three was against Chaos Zombie Sworn. Okay, interesting. Yeah. It confused me a little bit because I thought it was going to be like a pure like Chaos Light Sworn. No, then he just sent uh, summoned out Solitaire and I just got really sidetracked by that. <laughs> um it went to game three uh yeah he just completely forgot that he can chain lancia to the talents so i couldn't just take the lancia out of his hand mm. and he thought that uh, i couldn't kill him through uh, i couldn't come off too bad uh, too hard yeah uh, but i had keras that with another try name so he was just dead that turn mm. uh round four was against Inf uh infernoid <laughs> sure <Kyle>. 55 <laughs> cards uh, very intense, point to time, and I won because I had more life points than my opponent. Okay. Uh, round six was against Adam Ancipator. Mm hmm. Um, round one, uh, normal combo, more or less enough. Uh, game, oh, game two was. He made full board, and I got through most of it. Uh, just one interruption left, and then I just couldn't play through it. Mm -hmm. And then game three was quite funny. Uh, he special summons his analyzer. Um, so I pop it with Dryden. He then reborns it with the signs. Then I bounce it with uh, double dragon lords. Then he normal summons it. Then I sure reg it. <laughs> and he just passes the turn. <laughs> so that analyzer was summoned three times. And it was not sticking. And that's <laughs> you, what won the game. You made damn sure of that. <laughs> it went to the hand to a grave and to a banished pile <laughs> and never stayed on the field for more than a second. Good. Teach him uh, a lesson. Then, uh, last round in Swiss, this is on table one against Herman Hansen. Mm -hmm. uh, the quickest match I think I played in the whole event. I think the whole the whole three games were, took about 13 minutes. Okay. Uh, game one, I do I win a die roll, do normal combo. Um, I flip order. He has a handful of spells. Go to game two cool. straight away. Sure. Uh, game two, I think we trade on advantage, but yeah, just one more card for me, mm. and he just wins from that. Um, game three, uh, my hand is really bad. I end on Dryden set two pass. Uh, he goes lightning storm. I go chain judgment. He goes normal summon Ram Ram. I pop with Dryden. He goes chain chalice. I go chain judgment. Uh, I, I never thought I'd be judgment in a. Uh, forbidden chalice but here we are <laughs> um yeah and then after that i normal summon a zoo and he just scoops it up because he knows it's game jeez jeez so that could have gone either way that was kind of lucky you opened them two judgments then because that's a knife edge game uh yes yeah, just if you had one extender from there uh pretty sure you would have won that game quite easily man fine margins fine margins but that's what it takes to be able to get into the top cuts right of course Playing on table one against a world's competitor for the difference between topping and not is quite intense. Yeah, yeah. And so so after that, it was top eight, right? Which was the, the Quincy game. Uh, yes. So Sunday, we moved to top eight. Uh, played against Jake Quincy. It was a mirror match uh, with Trizu. Mm -hmm. um, game one, I do enough. I punch it. Game two, um, I have Gamma in hand. Oh, I've got Gamma and Pank. Mm -hmm. uh, he starts with a cat, and I hold the gamma until my turn. Uh, he has Apo, a Dryden plus set free pass. Mm -hmm. uh, so in my head, I'm like, the only way I get punished for this is if he has exactly judgment for yep. the pank. He does have judgment, which kind of sucks. Uh, so summon a uh, pank judgments. I go fractal effect. He chains Apo. I chain. Uh, gamma. Yep. So that clears out. I get my send for Nerval, get my search. And then at this point, there's a massive misplay on my part. I go battle phase, I att attempt to attack into a Dryden. He goes start battle phase, uh, pop the driver. 
What I should have done there is attacked the Gamma into the Dryadent, so then I can summon Zeus on my, uh, during main phase 2. Mm -hmm. uh, because for those who aren't aware, only a Exceed monster has to battle. It doesn't need to be yours. Yeah. As long as it battles, you can summon Zeus. Yeah, that's correct. Um, I actually only heard this for the first time. I think last week I always just assumed it was yours. And uh, when I read it again, I'm like, fuck, this card's even better than I thought it was. Yes, and I'm pretty sure uh, to trigger that, all you need to do is have a successful attack declaration. Yeah. So as long as the attack declaration happens, it doesn't matter if anything changes in the damage step or um, the monsters change on the field. As soon as you declare that attack onto an XC monster, you're able to summon Zeus. That's pretty good. Um, so yeah, if I attacked into that, I would have been in a lot better position because... Uh, I go off, I summon out Zeus, I clear the field, I have Zeus with two materials plus a revolt, yep. and I just win from there. I don't, I misplay a little bit, and he ends up having a second revolt set, Yeah. so I don't lose that. And then game three, um, I, the biggest misplay I've ever done, I think, um, in this deck, I desired too early. Right. So I banished double revolt and order. Oh. Pain. So in a mirror match, it's really rough. Um, it was like, It's not the end of the world, but it's rough to deal with. Mm -hmm. uh, so doing normal combo, uh, he ends up having double, uh, triple talent tactic. So that eats up one or, uh, one judgment, and uh, I have to chain the double Dragon Lords to bounce his Dryden at that point, or I'm going to lose my upper loser. Mm -hmm. uh, so that all happens. Um, and then... Uh, it comes back to my turn. I have Fractal, Keras, and Tenki. I search Lam Lam. If I just go normal some Lam Lam, make Borbo, uh, go into uh, attack, go into Zeus, clear his field, and then start doing Tri Brigade stuff, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but for some reason, I go Keras effect, pitch Lam Lam, then he goes on summon Lantia, and just lose him there. Oh. It's rough, but it's. It was in my hands, I just threw it away. Yeah. So, not yeah. Look, it's one of them, I guess, like I say, you've, you've at least identified it. You can, not that it makes it any easier to deal with, but at least you know for next time the kind of things of that you, you should think about. So, okay. So it, always just learn from your mistakes with things like this. Yeah, of course. And it sounds like otherwise, though, your, your matchups went pretty well. I mean, it sounds like it went pretty well altogether. Obviously, I mean, oh, yeah. topping is good, so... The deck worked almost flawlessly for the whole event. Uh, mm -hmm. Apart from one game against Vlad, I open playable almost every game. That's good. I mean, that's a sign of a good deck, right? That's the difference between yeah. a, a good deck and a, a tier 2, tier 3 deck sort of thing. Yes, uh, with this deck, you should have a live hand, I want to say, about 95% of the time. And occasionally you all brick and it sucks, but... Not every deck's going to be 100% consistent all the time. No, and I think unless you're playing like a tier 0 deck, that just doesn't really happen all that much. All you can do is obviously just optimise as best you can, I guess, and then hope for the best. Yeah. And oh. with the list itself, it's very streamlined, at least in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, there's not much uh, fat to the deck. Uh, it's It's just good stuff. Just throughout. Well, I think one of the things with Tri Brigade, and th this is where you say about trimming the fat, I think one of the things that's really important about it, and I always say this to the guys I talk to who played the deck, it feels a lot like um, Salad to me, in that it's those one and two card combinations that get all your plays going, and you're not doing these crazy uh, unplayable, you know, not, not like these unbreakable boards like all these big combo decks, but you're consistently end on those one or two interrupts, or maybe even three, you know. It's always just... It's it's controlling, keeping the tempo of the game at your pace, uh, much like Salad used to do, and then uh, you know generating advantage and that kind of thing. That's how it feels a lot to me. Would that be a fair assessment? Would you say? Hey, yeah. In modern terms, I'd say it's more like like a Salad, like a very mid rangey deck where you're playing for the resources as well as a few interruptions. Mm -hmm. um, but at least in the mirror match, I always feel that it's a little bit like a goat format. It's just goat format with one, like, half your cards can end in game as long as you play it right. Sure. Uh, so it's very, the mirror match is very skillful if you uh, take away um, just cards like uh, Lancia. Yeah. If you take away Lancia, take away Order, uh, the matchup becomes so skillful. 
Um, the person who does win the die roll has the advantage, of course. Yeah. But if you play better than your opponent, you should win 99% of the time. Okay. Well, that's it. That all sounds pretty much spot on from, again, the op- opinions that I've heard elsewhere. Now, what I will like to quickly do is I'd like to go through uh, some of the things that I've spied in the deck that are slightly different than maybe what I've seen with other lists. It might not be entirely accurate, but also I wanted to um, question you on a few omissions. So um, the first thing I wanted to note was that you've got triple strike in here, which uh, I've not seen so many maining. Um, what's the sort of thought process around that? So, strike this format is good going first or going second. Mm-hmm. Um, it's more of a fact that uh, it was, in all honesty, it was a debate between a strike or an, a third, uh, another set of hand traps. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no hand traps which I felt which were strong enough to be main decked, but also be versatile enough to hit as many matchups as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only thing I can think of is uh, Effect Veiler. Uh, but the only issue with Effect Veiler is it plays straight into uh, talent. And yeah. because it's invitational, the the higher level players have, on average, better cards. Yeah. And you have to play for the format you're playing in. Sure. Um, the reason I'm playing Strike is going first, uh, if you have Strike and your normal setup, it's very hard to break through for a lot of decks. Um, even in the middle match, just striking the uh, when they go into Zeus can just win you the game. Yeah. Or just uh, striking one of the effects on field can just be enough sometimes. Um, as well as going second, um, there's been times where I have revolt and strike, as well as say I open with um, Keras plus Kit. So I fill the graveyard. I don't get any monsters onto my field properly. As long as I got, re- re- excuse me, revolt plus strike, I know that revolt is going through no matter what. Yeah. Um, because no one's gonna be main decking uh judgments unless they're playing more of a control deck. Um, and it's just so strong of either supplementing your board or breaking your opponents, and spell speed three is very strong. In this format, especially. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't disagree. From my um, experience recently, at least, Strike has been, uh, in fact, pretty much every game I've played, and it's been the bane of my existence. And then, obviously, I know that's a bit anecdotal, um, just from my own personal view, but it, it, it does feel very, very strong. So it's nice to hear that that's not just sort of uh, an opinion I'm getting from playing against people at locals and that kind of thing, that it's actually potentially quite a strong option at higher tiers of the game. Uh, yes, it's um, it's definitely a lot stronger if you was playing a slightly heavier trap lineup. Uh, mm-hmm. Say if you was playing trenchers as well, because mm-hmm. trenchers plus strike can clear every field in the game, more or less. Yeah. Um, reason I didn't play trenchers is I just didn't feel it is strong enough to warrant playing. And if I'm going first, I don't want to have it on my field. Going second, it's not bad, but I if I don't have strike, there's no guarantee it's going to be going through. Yeah. Um. And also, I just preferred the say the gammas over trenchers because then I have a way to break my opponent's board while going uh, second instead of having to wait until their third turn. Yeah, that that, that all makes sense. Um, okay, so one other question I had in terms of uh, cards that have been included in the deck, and then I'll go to some that uh, I have questions for about omissions here. Uh, the other one is uh, again that bird thing that I'm not even going to try and pronounce it. Um, the Desperate Doom Eagle. Now, I've noticed a bit of a pattern here that you absolutely seem to love cards that shuffle things from the grave back into the deck. It's a very strong effect uh, <laughs> against Drytron. If you end on this, um, just shuffle back their Ben 10 so it can't trigger. Shuffle back their Drytrons, it's pretty strong. Mm-hmm. Um, against Dino, uh, if you end on, uh, I think it's called like, a Hesvelga, it's a big bird. Mm-hmm. Uh, you just shuffle back the misc, and they just can't really do much. Yeah. So if you've got this plus revolt, you kind of just win that matchup anyway. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's mainly here because I wanted a second link free, which wasn't Earth to go into. Yeah. Uh, because with access code talk, I want to have a bit more of a variety of my attributes. Um, 
And it did hurt a tiny bit not having the second Rugal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the other attributes and the versatility of the Big Bird can come up in certain matchups. Did Again, it come up? I uh, didn't play uh, many like uh, decks which uh, Big Bird is good against. Okay, sure. Uh, but it's it can come up in very niche situations. Okay, well that that was what my question was going to be, but I think you've uh, you more or less answered that one there. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting choice. One one of those cards that you don't really see being used, but I mean it it, it does make sense um, from a lot of aspects. So that's fair. Um, I'd like to go on to uh, to this. Uh, maybe one more question that doesn't really fall into either of those categories, which is the zoo package. Um, mm-hmm. So I've noticed, and this is more just an open question for anyone that might be um, uninformed. I've noticed in um, a lot of decks that they've cut the zoo package down quite significantly. A lot of builds were playing uh, Thoroughblade and uh, Whiptail before, whereas now we're just kind of on the two RAM, one wrap here. here. Um, is there any particular reason for all of that, or do you think that this is the, the sort of right balance, or, you know, what are your thoughts on that in general? So, Blade is only really good for when you have multiple zoos, mm-hmm. and in this deck you'd only want to open one. Uh, it's got a slight bigger attack value, but that's about always going for it. The mm-hmm. Whiptail's nice, but because of the uh, absolute lack of um, Shadow in general, uh, Wind is no longer an issue, and that is mainly what you play the Whiptail for. Sure. As well as there's a combo where if you open up Rat, uh, Rat Peer plus a Fractal, you can end on some like a pretty cool board. Uh, but the only issue I see with that is you waste a Sure Egg in your extra deck to do so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and to me, it just I over the last uh, two, three events I've played with this deck, it's never came up where I wanted to do, do that combo. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have, I've seen, they've been cutting down the zoo package to one barrage, one rat, one uh, ram, and that's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Which I understand, uh, but I always would like to have access to my zoo cards, uh, as well as having a further. Uh, insulation from things like desires because if i have rat and i banish my only ram ram that means that the uh, rat peer combos are just now not great you can yeah. make chuck and i bring one back and make vegeta and that's it yeah whereas if you have a ram you can have um full combo uh as long as you open up rat plus a one of a good try names you make some pretty unbreakable boards sometimes Okay. Um, yeah, I just don't agree with playing just two zoos as well as a barrage for it. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah, and I, I completely get all your, uh, your sort of what you're saying there in terms of uh, this seems to be that sweet spot maybe. Um, I, know, I know in decks where I've used zoo engines and where I've, even when I've had maybe four or five zoos in there, you always feel bad if you don't have access to them. So I guess having that balance correct. I mean, obviously you've got the advantage in this deck of having other ways of getting into it, and it's, it seems like a lot easier to get into. Um, but it does sort, sort of feel bad when you don't have access to them, so that that, that all makes sense to me. Um, in terms of cards that I'm not seeing in here uh, that I'd like to, to sort of question, again, these are just cards that I've seen from a variety of other tri decks. Um, so the first one is Rescue Cat. I've seen this creeping into many, many lists recently. So uh, what, what's your take on Rescue Cat? I love Rescue Cat as a card. I am just not a fan of Rescue Cat in this deck. It, I haven't tried it uh, too vigorously, so I might just be uh, taking it with a lot of anecdotal evidence that I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just don't feel that... It's... Of course, if it resolves, it's an absolutely amazing card. Don't get me wrong. It's just... I'm just not a fan. Okay. Uh, with how many hand traps are in the format? We got Ash, we got Gamma, we got Imperm. They all hit Cat. Mm-hmm. And yes, the Cat does tribute itself off for cost, so you can uh, Gamma any of their hand traps if you do play Gamma, which you should do if you play the Cat. Mm-hmm. Um, but just an Imperm on Cat uh, on normal summon just feels so bad that I just, I just. Really don't want to go through that. I'd rather them imperm a try name, 
because then after that I'm like, okay, I've managed some stuff, that's fine. I can at least attempt to keep on playing. Yeah. If you get in permanently cat, there's you got your Keras and you got Barrage and that's it. So do you feel it makes it a bit more like a glass cannon effect in that it raises the ceiling potentially, but at the, at the risk of uh, maybe being a little bit more susceptible to certain hand traps? To me, uh, I bring it back to Burning Abyss, where uh, Save Your Hand is Tour Guide, and then you've got two BAs, which one of them is a graph. Uh, in 99% of the time, you go over BAs, because if that gets interrupted, you can continue to play. If yep. your tour guide gets interrupted, that is turn done. That is game over. Yeah. That is just the sort of mentality I have with it, where Messi's Cat is basically tour guide for the deck. Yep. Um, so if that gets interrupted, you're not doing too much after that. Okay. Yeah, that 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 all makes sense. Um. Okay. Sure. Absolutely happy with that answer. Cool. Um, and the, the, so the final question I had in terms of uh, cards are omitted from the deck. Uh, I don't see Alpha here. So my mentality with Alpha is if Dragon Link sees more play, I will play Alpha. Uh, other than that, I don't feel Alpha's too great uh, because in the mirror match, you can just dry and pop it and then that's done. You can just revolt, banish it, and that's done. Mm-hmm. Um, in Dragon Link, it's so much harder to deal with because their main piece of interaction to get rid of your stuff is through either negation, which doesn't destroy, or a bouncing back to hand. Where with Alpha, you just bring it back again and again and again until mm. you clear the field. Yeah. Uh, soon, as soon as Alpha, uh, as soon as Dragon Link becomes more prevalent, uh, say in the next list, dragons don't get hit and there's a few things that shift around in the format with like Trizu and Drytron, which I don't see happening. Um, but if it does, and Dra- uh, Dragon Link comes for best deck again, uh, Alphas will be in there. It's just I've decided that Pank is better because it is a quick effect. Yeah. Yeah, that's, again, a fair assessment. Wouldn't disagree with that at all. Um, okay, in terms of like all of my questions and that kind of thing, that's pretty much it. Um, are there any comments you want to make? Anything that you want to say about the deck? Uh, deck was perfect apart from one game. Uh, I think this is probably one of the most streamlined lists I've played of the, li- of the deck. Um, there's nothing too crazy going on with it. It's just the cards you want to see, you play three of. Cards which you which are searchable, play two of. It's, to be honest, I think it is probably one of the best built uh tries you list without rescue cat in it. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> cool. Alright. Um so uh well, one final question before we start to sign off. Um on the list, do you think anything will happen to Zoo in general? Um I feel that Tenki should probably get hit a little bit. Maybe to one, maybe to two. Just to curve and consistency a little bit. As well as... I, I kind of want Zeus to go to one. Yeah. I feel one Zeus is fine. You don't need to keep on stacking Zeus's on Zeus's on Zeus's. It gets a bit abusive, doesn't it? Yeah, but other than that... Um, I think at most a fractal semi-limit or limit. But that is as much as I can think of. There won't be any hard hits on this deck other than just slight consistency hits. Yeah. Yeah, I think that all makes complete sense. I think obviously we've seen with the OCG they've uh, they've nailed Dryden again, uh, which I don't see happening here. I could weirdly see them hitting something like Borbo uh, just to prevent you being able to get that sort of sneaky, you know, direct punch make Zeus uh, sort of thing. But I don't know whether it, it would happen or whether they'll hit it at all, to be honest with you. Um, I like to think they wouldn't because I, I I think the the formats I think the formats in a good place in that we've got a nice um, it I think from a competitive standpoint it's not so good because you could be playing so many different decks um, but from a sort of player enjoyment uh, particularly whilst you've got no like YCSs and things or a very limited YCS in in the case of the remote duel um, I think it's nice to have a bit of variety. 
Yeah. Um, like I said, this deck only needs some small consistency hits like Tenki or Fractal. Um, like Drytron needs a little consistency hit, I guess. Yeah. Um, but enough hand traps just kills that deck off. Uh, Dragon Link needs just a few little pieces here or there just to tone it down a little bit. Say uh, I think we can... Or... Yeah, yeah. I think we can finally say that I think probably the last of the Gar Dragons needs to just sort of piss off, really, right? <laughs> that or uh, Chaos Space to 1 is also a nice option because that does... You all think of the, the search effect being the busted effect, which it is, but the fact that you just get to recycle anything you want back into yeah. your deck or extra deck and then also draw a card out of it, it's kind of nuts. It effectively makes the, the little Chaos Dragons, the ones that are one, it effectively makes them unlimited. Like, it just... It just... It sort of replaces the fact that you, you should only be able to have access to one of each copy. You can just keep, like, effectively looping them around, right? It's, it's a bit silly. Uh, in most cases, yeah. If you want to play a more of a uh, advantage sort of build of a deck, then yeah, that those will go forever. Until you run out of your chaos space, of course. Yeah, yeah. So it gets a bit silly. Um, right, okay, I think that's about us wrapped up. Uh, just one final thing I wanted to mention here. If you guys are watching it and you have made it this far into the video, I do really appreciate it, first and foremost. But you should also check out Kian's channel, uh, Master Diamond YGO. Is that correct? I believe it's now just Master Diamond on YouTube, but Master Diamond YGO on Twitch as uh, well. Ah, perfect. Okay, I'll put links to those in the description. So if you guys want to go check out uh, the bits that he's pumping up online uh, and see how he's getting on, you can definitely go ahead and do that there. Are there any shout-outs before we go? Yes. So we got the Boys Boys, uh, Sound Group of Lads, uh, testing with him a little bit. Um... Uh, Shouts to Joshua Oosters for a bit of advice uh, and Niall McNulty for helping me build the deck. Um, as well as shouts to Lewis Dora for the talents and Morton for lending me the imperms, which I am a bit late with sending them back, so apologies. <laughs> well, you, you can thank him for this then, right? <laughs> it gets into your list nicely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's awesome. Thank you very much for taking the time to do the uh, deck profile. I do really appreciate it. Obviously, this is time out of your own evening and all that. And it sounds like you've had a bit of a long day, to be honest. Uh, remote duels, locals, and now you're coming back and doing lists, all part of the grind, right? A hundred percent. Bit of content. Can't we really go wrong with it? Absolutely not. You can never go wrong with more content. That's uh, that's uh, my number one motto. Uh, right, okay, well, that's it for uh, all from us, guys. Make sure you go ahead and check out his channel. Give him uh, a subscription or follow, what have you, and uh, make sure you do the same on here. So thank you very much for coming along, guys. Do really appreciate it, and I will see you in the next one.